thank you for loving us. We thank you for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Oh God, what a great day to be alive. Everything is crazy all around us. We live in a pre-Christian era and the wheels are falling off and only Jesus, only Jesus can matter. Transform us, oh Lord, so that we can have your vision of a time like this. Bring blessing to us and through us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. So Luke 1 is like 80 verses, and it takes us through all kinds of things, including the uh, relationship between Mary and Elizabeth, between the children in their womb, and uh, the prophecies. And the, it is a, it's an ideal setup for the rest of the book of Luke. Um, it gives us uh, personal insights. It builds, it builds storylines like, like no other. Um, not uh, kind of relishing the, uh, the interactions and the storyline and the look and the, and the feel of things. Mm -hmm. God bless it. And so now we get to a much more widely read chapter of Luke, and it's Luke 2, and, um, it, you know, every church does a Christmas pageant, uh, and the churches today sometimes mess it up, but <laughs> the reality of this was drummed into us from childhood, and uh, just to brag on my Becky, whatever was going on, whoever was the main speaker, Becky would be in the chorus, mouthing all the words, so pretty soon, nobody was concentrating on anything, but and she knew everybody's line in every in every play, and it was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we <laughs> we have trouble with historical references because historians of the time did not keep time well. Mm -hmm. And I found out I don't know a few weeks ago there are two atomic clocks in the world right now, mm -hmm. and they don't keep identical time. <laughs> And they're, they're, they're a fraction off, but the elevations matter and the longitude and latitude matters. So if we can't today get two clocks to be identical, I mean, identical, not surprising. So, so people have tried to hyper connect the historical things that Luke tells us with the timeline of G. And that has put the birth of Jesus at 7 B.C., at 5 B.C., at 2 B.C. All of that, all of that just makes you tired. Now, first of all, you need to understand there's no zero B.C. I mean, mm -hmm. it went from 1 B.C. to 1 A.D. Mm -hmm. And so here we have, here we have, but I want you to notice from this, don't, not a time piece, but a... A historical moving of thousands and perhaps millions of people to make a prophecy of Jesus come through. Mm -hmm. And the prophecy came true at the hands of wicked people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's quite a story. Um, funny, the <laughs> clocks are interesting. Based on the vibration of the cesium atom and uh, <laughs> All cesium atoms are the same uh, temperature and pressure are going to vibrate the same, and it, uh, they are all by such a tiny degree that it's, it's hard to even assign a number to it. But nonetheless, it's true if you slightly different in elevation and so forth. But this brings forth, uh, you know, Einstein's theory of relativity mm -hmm. that uh, that they are, uh, the uh, different uh, physical properties vary depending on how they're associated with other physical properties. <laughs> wow, was that, a, uh, was that a simplified version of, of uh, exhausting Einstein, Einsteinian <laughs> thinking? Right. Good job. Anyway. Okay. Pick it up in two, pick, yeah. chapter 2. We're in New Living, Luke chapter 2. Let's pick it up. Yep, here we go. Birth of Jesus, New Living Translation, Luke 2, verse 1. At that time, the Roman Emperor, Augustus, Decree that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. Okay. So why would a Roman emperor decree a census? Uh, 
Well, it's um, um, from their point of view, probably the biggest reason is for tax purposes. That's right. And, what's the, and the second biggest reason would be to say, okay, I now have eight gazillion people. I'm yeah. really special. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, the, and the Jews had to be careful of taking censuses among their people for that very, very reason, that they not think because of their numbers they're special. Um, so, yeah. and it's a major undertaking to take a census. Sure. Well, as it says here, it's Roman Empire. Roman emperor. This is the a census of literally the whole known world. That's right. And it says Augustus, considered the richest man in the world, and supposed it worth about three trillion dollars in in uh, uh, modern dollars. Um, he is the son of Julius. He is the first Roman emperor. Right. Um, and uh, he was obviously emperor at the time of Jesus' birth, but it's really Tiberius. Who was emperor during Jesus' ministry? That's right. The second exactly. emperor. Anyway, okay. no, no, no. We need to know that because we know we know that Jesus had to go to Egypt to avoid that. We don't get that in Luke right. together. Yeah. So it, it matters that these. Um, so this empire expands across essentially yeah. three continents. Yes. For Europe, no. what we call Asia, and North Africa. And North Africa. So three, three continents yeah. are under his rule. I mean, everything else they consider just falling off the earth. Eh, if it isn't Roman, it's not even worth mentioning in conversation. So when we talk about the whole world from a Roman perspective, they don't even think, they don't even consider those islands off that or this thing. And in fact, you know, if, if a Roman soldier walks on the ground, then it's a real, a real place. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, it is not even worth mentioning. Yeah. So, so when it says it goes out to the whole world, we know that's not true. And yet, with the with the Roman mindset, it is mm -hmm. because what there's nothing else besides Rome. We have soldiers everywhere. So, okay. Yeah, the Greek census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. That's essentially circles the Mediterranean for the most part and then extends out to the north and to the east. Um, anyway, verse 2. This was the first census taken when Quirinius Quirinius uh, was governor of Syria. Okay, and here's a detail that Luke gives us to try and get a timeline right. in place. But timelines are a mess. Not because Luke is a mess, but because, <laughs> because we can't keep track of time. We lose days, we lose years. Why is this? Um, and so, um, but Luke wants to pinpoint this historically as much as possible. Sure. Yep. Verse 3 all returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. You think about why would that happen? Well, I can just take, everybody just freeze. We'll take the census, whatever city you're in. Mm. But no. He forces them to get back to their to the land of their uh, great 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 grand anyway however many greats it is back, mm -hmm. which forces Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so it, he actually made his job harder to fulfill the prophecy. Mm -hmm. The fact that a king wants to take our census that's his right, mm -hmm. but the fact that he forces this family back. And, and not even knowing that this is the family of the Messiah. I mean, just totally oblivious to the incredible power of God's big picture that drives this, this young family back to the place of David. Mm -hmm. it, it, it just, so God used this historically evil king mm -hmm. to fulfill his purpose. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. We'll see that uh, Bethlehem is um, a city of David, right? City of David's family. That's we'll right. See the whole um, story of, of Ruth comes right. to play, and it's the background that that uh, um, Amen. that um, uh, undergirds this whole um, biblical narrative, kin, kinsman redeemer, and so yeah. on. But anyway, that'll come up. Uh, verse 3, all returned to their own ancestors.
ancestral towns to register for this census. Four, and jo uh, because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth and Galilee. Okay. Near Galilee. Yeah. So we have... <laughs> And it's funny because we don't associate we associate David with with Bethlehem. We also associate David with Jerusalem and and Judea and the areas he conquered and the um, but but Bethlehem is his roots. Yeah. Um, and and so why would we stop back to David? It, it's it's a wonderful picture for me because David is a pivot point in history that Jesus is related to, and yet driving the Lord Jesus' family back to Bethlehem, um, it, it's astonishing. It's just overwhelming the, the detail that God went through. And it had to be before, <laughs> before the temple fell. It had to be, there's a whole number of things that had to line up mm -hmm. for the birth of Jesus to happen when it did. Yeah. And most of them out of the control all of them out of the control of Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, and this is okay, uh, verse 5. Yep. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, not married, who was now expecting a child. Okay, so we, one of the commentaries we were listening to this morning went on at great length about how Joseph is not yet married to Mary. And then when everybody in the village does the math, and eventually is married to Mary, mm -hmm. but not until the borough, mm -hmm. uh, everybody says, huh, wait a second. You were married here, mm -hmm. and the baby was born here. That means he is illegitimate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that culture, in that culture, that was a death sentence, really. Mm -hmm. you, would, you could be killed for having an illegitimate child. Sure. You, know, you just think, Whoa, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and betrothal is a little, it's a legal contract. Um, and, and Joseph is a righteous man, and he, but he has to put up with this. Uh, and he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, right. In fact, he only did right in, in this, in the yeah. sense of this. Sure. Yeah. Verse 6. And while they were there, uh, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in snugly, uh, in snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Okay. For her. Yeah. yeah, Bethlehem was but a wide spot in the road. This is about six miles south of the southern um, tip of uh, Jerusalem. Okay. In between is... Uh, an area called the City of David, okay. and the, the uh, remnants of uh, David's mansion are there. That's so, right. uh, so you got to think, just putting yourselves in the feet of the uh, town of Bethlehem, oh no, mm -hmm. Caesar has set up a census, and everybody in any way related to David is going to show up here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't you can't possibly imagine how how uh, frantic that makes the landowners and you know well, what are we going to do set up ten, I mean how are we going to handle this this influx of people yeah. even with months of preparation oh yeah and remember Solomon Solomon was David's son and Solomon had what seven hundred wives uh -huh. and three hundred uh, girlfriends beyond the happy concubines. So how many children, so many years later, <laughs> I suppose that entails? That's right. <laughs> no good, good morning, Todd. Welcome. Morning. Oh, okay. Hi. The time came for the baby to be born. Okay? Yep. And we would have to add right on time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like it's right on time to Joseph. It doesn't look like it's right on time to Mary. But from the heavenly perspective, right on time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, because Jesus was born at this moment, he had a reputation of being born in a manger. Mm -hmm. He had a reputation of being born illegitimately. He had a reputation, but, but the, 
but the huge pieces of history are coming together um, mathematically astounding ways. Yep. And it's now time. Yep. It's also uh, uh, astronomically uh, correct, too. Right. Because it had to be an alignment of the stars to produce the star of Bethlehem. That's right. Not to get too far into it, but it, it's really intricate. It's amazing how uh, it could have only occurred at that time. That's right. It would have been hundreds of years different before uh, that particular astrological astronomical, sorry, astronomical uh, phenomenon would have occurred again. Amen. She gave birth to her firstborn. Notice firstborn because um, the scriptures are pretty clear that he's got brothers and sisters and and none of them are at the cross, um, but mom is. Right. Gave birth to her firstborn. By the way, um, so there's a wedding after this birth. There is a uh, uh, Probably a family of seven kids, maybe five, yeah. at least six. At maybe least six, six right, according maybe to nine. scripture and, 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 and implications that were more. And, yeah. and, the, and, and his sisters live among us too, which is a number bigger than one, but not most. So <laughs> yeah. the whole universe is coming together for this moment. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the stars, the, the evil governor, the, um, the, the places of, of of history, it's all coming together. Mm -hmm. So she wraps him in strips of cloth and lays him in a manger. We, we don't use mangers much. How would we talk about that today? Feeding trough. A feeding trough, okay. If you're if you're gonna feed an animal, it's easier, you have better control over it if you, if you put it in a controlled area. Um, right. You think about feeding the horses into a, yeah. um, now they'll eat it off the ground, but yeah. it's a, it, it's more manageable if you have a place to put sure. it. Yeah. Because there was no room in the inn. Because there's no room in the inn. Right. There was no room for them. In the inn, sounds like they went to the, you know, Best Western and yeah. the quote. But that's not it. This is, this is generations of family, of Mary and of Joseph. And in none of the relatives' houses or whatever is there a, a spare couch. Mm -hmm. There's not room anywhere. The city has gone from um, rural, almost ghost town, don't get that wrong, but to uh, a population explosion, like a little like what happens to Cape Cod in the summer. Yeah. Some towns go from 3,000 people year round to 40,000 people. Uh, you just think, there's literally, as much as there is affection between these family lines, there is literally no room in this whole place. No. So born in a barn, mm -hmm. and they rest him. I mean, you just think about how how important people really like the trumpets blown when they walk into a city, and uh, uh, red carpet treatment, and the uh, Paserati, or however you say that word. But there's none of that for him. Mm -hmm. And and in a real sense, isn't that glorious mm -hmm. that the Creator of the universe comes? In a manger, mm -hmm. and and the world changes. Sure does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bethlehem was only thought to have a population about two hundred, <laughs> except for the census, which literally shuffled the deck of population for the whole world. It's really okay. astounding, and how it shakes out. Gee, they're just where they're supposed to be. They're just where they're supposed to. Be. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Moving on, the shepherds and the angels. Verse 8. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Kind of redundant. Of course they're guarding their flocks of sheep. They're shepherds. Yeah. But Well, actually, it, make, I mean, it does make the point that uh, it was warm enough for them to guard their sheep. It was really, that's the winter. Maybe not but, so much. <laughs> But the flip argument on that is that these were the shepherds guarding the pasture sheep of the temple. Oh yeah. So, so that they had to be guarding the sheep, whatever the weather. Uh huh. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Um, nine. Suddenly, 
an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. And they were terrified. Wow. Okay. So the reputation the first century shepherd had was at least unsavory. Um, they, we think of David as a, uh, you know, a, a redhead just kind of flopping around in the desert with it. But these guys could take on lions with a club. Mm -hmm. uh, one on one, you lion, me club, me win. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the fact that they are uh, they they stunk like sheep. I mean, mm -hmm. this is, I mean, a shepherd walks into a town. I mean, there's no doubt he's a shepherd. <laughs> okay, he is. Um, he's proud of his flock, but he is not what you would call dinner guest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Socially acceptable. That's right. Yeah. So in this town that is of David, that that the Lord God Almighty has literally shaken the universe to make happen, the angels show up to this unsavory bunch called shepherds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So yeah. Um so the glory, the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were terrified. And that's an interesting thing, too. I mean, if you take a lion on, with your one, one club, one lion, me and you, well, let's, let's go into the pit. Um, in the pit with a lion on a snowy day is one of David's um, um, uh, protective men. But to be flat out terrified, this is... Nothing scared these guys. And all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord shows up, and they are a mess. Mm -hmm. They're just like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, it's hard to imagine what other synonyms might apply here. But uh... I, think about, I think about the fishermen apostles when Jesus was in the storm. Mm -hmm. They were terrified. Mm -hmm. You see, they understood storms. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and they were terrified. Right. But this is... This is a glowy, explosive, heavenly encounter. Yeah. yeah, this wasn't just out of the ordinary. This was a one-off event. That's right. Um, so nothing to compare it to. No, yeah, it, and obviously makes one wary. Verse 10, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. You think about the all people there. That whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord um, is, is built into that. Yep. And it's also built into, and the gospel will go forth to every ethnic mm -hmm. before I return. Right. To the Jew first, yes, but to everyone. Amen. Available. And what a joy it is that people can worship the same Jesus you and I worship in every corner of the world, in every, in every ethnic, in every underground or obviously they can worship Jesus, the same Jesus that you and I worship. Mm -hmm. Joy all give. Verse 11. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem. The city of David. Amen. So we think about these, these are probably Jewish shepherds. Because to understand the concept of the Messiah and the Lord, maybe not. But so if they're Gentiles, it's a it's a whole it's a cool story too. So the Messiah has shown up in Bethlehem, right? <laughs> like, woo! Yeah. And so, and they, and you'll recognize him by the sign. You find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Pretty cool because, because Mary has just put the baby in the manger, mm -hmm. and at the same moment, the angels are announcing this. This thing, mm -hmm. this this event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe other versions use anointed in this verse or near this verse, uh, simply to point out that this is God's chosen. This is this isn't just another um, important natural birth, but there's something extra special about this one. Mm -hmm. um, verse twelve. And you will recognize him by this sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Amen. Amen. Okay. 
So, so these shepherds, just to give you, these shepherds are just outside of town, and they're going to descend upon Bethlehem, massively crowded Bethlehem, as a group of shepherds to come worship this baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you just the the, the uh, you know news at eleven, and the thing is running, and these guys. Wait a second, there's shepherds coming into town. There's a whole bunch of shepherds coming into town. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, 12, 13. Yeah, 13. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, other angels, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. <laughs> so not only does the angel show up and glow all over the place, but these shepherds, perhaps incredibly rare in history, that somebody gets an angelic vision that includes the angelic choir praising the Father. Amen. I mean, I, I can't tell you it's never happened in history, but it didn't happen very often in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And so, so Christ is born. The angel shows up and says to the shepherds, Whoa, the Christ is born, the Messiah is here, he's in the manger, he's got this wrapping, and he's in, I mean, literally lays it out for them, exactly where and how, and then, and then they're just stunned by that, they're, they're, they're literally, the breath knocked out of them, and then, and then, they get a, they get a vision into a heavenly choir, praising the Father for the birth of the Son, I mean, it just, it's a, crescendo of emotion in here. It is a... Um, mm -hmm. No. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Yeah. Indicating there are other heavens. Yeah, there you go. At least three. Mm -hmm. And uh, the highest one, of course, is uh, God's domain. Peace on earth uh, to those with whom God is pleased. Interesting. Peace, peace on earth. Goodwill to men is what we often see in and Christmas good. cards and so forth. That's right. But this is, but the shepherds are not a peaceful people. Right, well, yeah. This, so he offers peace to men of goodwill, not to peace to men who don't look for a bar fight. I mean, uh, uh, hyper-focusing my, my culture into this, but this is because, because of the heart that you have. And they go, okay, <laughs> for 15 Verse 15, when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see what this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. There you go. So, hey, let's go. They told us where the baby is. They told us that he's the Messiah. They told us what manger he's in. They told us we're going. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. So, I don't know. Two shepherds, 15 shepherds, 100 shepherds descend on Bethlehem to come and see this wonderful thing that has been gloriously announced, and it looks like only to them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yes. we, may, we may argue that the uh, appearance of the star to the magi, but, but this is a special occurrence to a special group of undesirable people, and... And the reaction is, let's go see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a happening which the Lord has told us about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it is. It is kind of funny. We realize how close the proximity is of Bethlehem to Jerusalem, six miles or so. You can see it plainly if you're standing on the south border of um, Jerusalem. You're looking past the city of David. Yeah. And it's there on the horizon. So you can imagine if the sky is full, if it's somewhere in that vicinity, yeah. it sounds like they're not they're not actually in Bethlehem per se at the time, but they had to be fairly new. Boy, the point is that any kind of elevation um, off that horizon could have been seen, you would think, for miles. If it, 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 the glory of the Lord is shining in the sky, yeah. how is the people in Jerusalem <laughs> miss this? And Bethlehem. But, Huh? And Bethlehem. And Bethlehem. Yeah. I mean, it's like, but apparently it didn't catch anybody else's attention, which has got to be supernatural. Amen. As well. Maybe cloud cover. It's hard to say. Anyway. Verse 16. 
they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the servants told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. Wow. Okay, so the shepherds are instructing Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, instructing is probably a little off. They're amplifying, they're resonating the words that have already been spoken into Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but still, these are things, these are things that Mary and Joseph didn't know before the, just, the, the shepherds brought it to them. Right, yeah. Verse 18. I love that they hurried, by the way. That they what? That they hurried. Uh-huh. Let's not pack a lunch. We're just going. Yeah. I mean, right. Well, sure. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 18. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The piece is coming together again. This yeah. is piece by and piece. Amplified. But Mary treasured all these things, giving careful thought to them and pondering them in her heart. Verse 20, the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Okay. I think I, I skipped over 17 as far as... Can we read 17 again? 17. After seeing him, let's see, the baby, right? The shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. Okay. So the first witnesses of the Lord Jesus is an angelic. The first witnesses, and the sense is the shepherds go through this whole town and said, the Messiah, I saw the angel, I saw the Messiah, I saw... So, so they couldn't keep quiet about what Jesus, about the Jesus they had just met. Mm -hmm. Even though he is days old, yeah. um, or hours old, or whatever. Yeah. And what could they know about it, really? Uh, but still, all of the events, all of the surrounding events, all the circumstantial, um, ex um, extraneous events uh, were just so dramatic that the story had to be told. That's right. It came out. The point is, they prophesied to them. The angels prophesied to the shepherds. They went and saw, and boom, that was just as, they, uh, just as it was described to them. That's right. And so now you have a whole village of relatives of Mary and Joseph, and therefore Jesus, mm -hmm. and they have all heard the beginning of the good news at the place that an ungodly king drove, forced them to go to. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the, 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 uh, the puzzle pieces just falling together, mosaic, I think we said. The, the, the visual on this is just stunning. It is. Yep. Yep. Okay, I guess uh, I guess that's a that's a good break for us. Sure. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen, just as it had been told them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. So again, talking about the deliciousness of Luke, that these are these are such these are these are visual pictures. That you can almost get into your brain. Mm -hmm. You know, these are wow. The shepherds are just out there. This is a night like every other night. Mm -hmm. They got a flock to guard. They got, you know, there's a gazillion people in the town. But we're shepherds. It doesn't matter. Yep. And therefore, and all of a sudden, the angel lights up the sky, angelic chorus, and lives, and their life is changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Aside from the controversy of exactly when this happened, yeah. uh, and there are uh, many good arguments at, for uh, different times, it's pretty much, it, it is, I mean, I think the, our culture has captured the Christmas story right. quite well. And at least our the parents' day, culture has. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's a whole generation that doesn't even know the Christmas story now. It, yeah, yeah, I suppose. That's a shame, but... Um, the, um, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the um, uh, it's, it's not just a story, but it's, it's captured in song. 
That's right. If you read, if you listen to the carols, the gospels, right here, the, the, and the whole this whole narrative is laid out. The detail, I think, is uh, quite quite um, uh, stunning that uh, it would come through from so many centuries of uh, translation and interpretation, and, and uh, of course, into the hands of people that um, had varying degrees, if any degree, of the Spirit directing them. Right? Still, it's, it is intact. You can find it in if you look for it. I mean, today it's not quite as prominent. But as kids, we, to, we memorized how many carols, you know, just knew them by heart. Um, and uh, that message, this message has been uh, ingrained in us, but yeah. Um, yeah. that's changing, unfortunately. It's a shame. And at a time like this, the, the world really needs a savior. Individuals in the world are the only hope. Yeah. And it's a great setup for the Antichrist. That's right. And there'll be a falling away, and there'll be a great revival. It's funny how both things are happening. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Amazing. Yep. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for such a precious, uh, life-changing um, day in the place of history. Um, life-changing for shepherds, for Mary, for Joseph. God, for the angels, and now even for us. Transform me, oh, Lord, so I can make a difference in a desperate and dying world. Name. Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord, for these ancient stories that uh, hold up and are true and are such a marvel even today that they uh, inspire and um, they give me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you for them. Uh, it's so great this, uh, this uh, uh, story, the uh, greatest story ever told. Yes. Help us uh, understand it, appropriate it to ourselves, that we might live uh, in ways that uh, please you, yes. glorify you, and be Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Blessings to you all. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen.